What's going on guys? It is A-Benz Fishing here back for another video. If you're new here, please subscribe because it helps me to grow this channel and continue to make these videos. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. Today's mission is actually pretty simple. I got some little pilchards, threadfin herring, and I'm actually gonna be trying to catch some small mangrove snapper, yellowtail snapper, or really I'd love to catch a little kubera. And I just do my first catch clean and cook for you guys. I'm sure that none of you are aware that I actually love to cook. My wife can vouch for me, so if this goes good, I will see you back in the kitchen. And yeah, let's see if we can get on it. I'm gonna get on the water. Mission is snapper. All right. So today's setup is a Vanstall VR75 on a Bubble Blade Tidal Select, seven foot six medium. Line is Beyond Braid 30 pound Bahama Blue 8X and 30 pound pink floral. And uh, yeah, the name for today's game is um, try to do a little catch and cook for you guys on uh, either mangrove or kubera. Put her in the well. What do we got here? Is that a little snook? Oh, is that a little snook? Oh, it's a little snook. Oh, wow, they're behind him. Wow, I already got what I came for, so now I'm just having fun. Yeah, he's gonna go. So this is a different bait. I wonder if it'll make a difference. This is a threadfin herring as opposed to a pilchard. Much less hardy bait, at least in my opinion. A little snook, wow, it made a difference. Look at that, he thunked it. Man, I really thought I had a freaking another snapper. When I want snapper, I can't get him. See ya, buddy. Let me go home. <sighs> Got a little snooker. Thought we were gonna pull something better up. It's about time to go, anyways. Dark snook, man. Dark. Look how dark. Go. Perfect release.
guys, we are back at the house and we are going to clean up this little Kubera snapper. This is a very small one. These guys get huge and they only have to be 12 inches to keep. So I actually prefer the small ones. I think the meat just tastes better. So this is actually the perfect size. I believe it was 15 inches. They get huge though. If you go out to the Keys or to Mexico, I mean, you can get Kuberas 50, 60 pounds, even bigger. So we got our trusty Bubba knife kit and I'm just gonna use a medium flex knife. Now I want you guys to make sure you know this. I'm horrible at filleting. I, you guys know I'm primarily catch and release. I almost never keep fish. So you guys can laugh at me. You can comment below uh, any tips and tricks for my next catch and cook. I do typically keep fish when I go on trips with friends. I'm almost never the one filleting them. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just trying to cut right along the ribs. There's not much meat here, so I don't want to waste any. That wasn't horrible. Got a couple little bones here, but overall that was not bad. Definitely left some meat, boys and girls, but hey, this is a learning process for me. There's actually some good meat in the head too. Let's go ahead and skin her. Wow. Pretty good little fillet. Guys, if, you, if I sound as shocked, if I sound shocked, it's because I am. I don't clean fish. Smaller fish are harder to clean too. The other day I had to clean a big old mutton snapper and it was much easier than this little guy. What do you guys think? Is it easier to fillet smaller fish or bigger fish? All right guys, here's our two little fillets. I'm gonna see you guys inside. So we're now in the kitchen. We got the fillets sitting on some ice water. One of, the, one of my specialties, let me preface this with the fact that I love to cook. My wife can vouch for me, she's behind the camera, right babe? Yes. I cook all the time and one of the things that I make that a lot of people ask me about is rice. It's actually a Brazilian rice. So my mom was born in Colombia, my wife is from Brazil. And so basically what you do is you take some garlic. So we basically are just going to have already pre-peeled cloves. Okay guys, a big tip for when you're mashing garlic is to put some rock salt in there, just a little bit. And then I like to put a little bit of olive oil. So I got enough cloves out. I got about seven, eight cloves because I'm also gonna use that for the fish. But uh, the rice takes longer. So I'm gonna put this rice to cook while I go and shower because the fish won't take long at all. So basically, just mash it really lightly so the garlics don't go everywhere. And then I'm just gonna push down. I personally, when I make the rice, and I'm gonna use this again for the fish, want to get it really, really mashed. All right guys, once we have our minced mashed garlic, we're gonna take a tablespoon and we're gonna put it in the rice. This is for about half a cup of rice. Then we're gonna take olive oil and we're gonna layer the bottom. Then we're gonna just turn our burner on high. Let that start to sear. That's the key to the rice. Put a cup of rice in here. This is jasmine extra long grain rice. And we're just gonna sear the rice. While we sear the rice with the garlic and the oil, we've got the hot water running. So the rule of thumb for one cup of rice, that means two cups of water. I'm at a point now where I can eyeball it, but for you guys back home, 
like one cup of rice, two cups of water. All right, there's our two cups of water. And now here's the key. We're going to put the lid on about 80% of the way and just leave some air on either side. And then I'm gonna let that water come to a boil. I'm gonna let it boil for exactly two minutes. And then I'm gonna switch the burner all the way to low and cover the rice. So again, bring the water to a boil, let that boil for exactly two minutes, and then cover the rice completely with the lid and bring the burner all the way to low, and then give it about 20 to 30 minutes. The trick with rice is to let it cook for a long time. And then once you cook it, I like to open the lid, mix it a little bit, and then let it sit and air out for about five to 10 minutes before I serve it. That's gonna give you that soft, and that like moist texture in the rice that you like where you can almost clump it together or you could break it apart. The perfect rice. All right guys, I'm freshened up out of the shower. Rice has been cooking for about 15 minutes now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna prep my sauce pan. I'm not gonna turn it on really yet. So what we're gonna do is put some garlic in there. Then we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil. Then we're gonna put a little bit of pepper, fresh cracked pepper. Then, then we're gonna put some butter. So I like to cut it up into smaller pieces. We're gonna put about a little more than a quarter of a stick in here. Boom. Now some lemon. We're gonna put this guy on just a little bit over low while we start to prep the fish pan. The last ingredient in that will be some fresh cilantro. All right guys, so I haven't even told you the recipe, but we're really strapped for time. It's already over 10 p.m. and I got work to do. So what we're gonna do is a very light fry and a panko battered um, Kibera snapper. But the main thing is gonna be the sauce, right? So we're gonna have some butter, olive oil, garlic, pepper, and some cilantro, and we're gonna mix it all together fresh lemon and it's gonna be delicious. It's a really simple fish recipe that I use for pretty much every single fish ever when I'm in a rush. So I've done it with tilapia, grouper, um, all different types of snapper, mutton snapper. I mean, you name it, I've, I've done this recipe with. So again, a light fry. And this is a really, really small piece of fish. So it's perfect for me. This should fry in just one or two minutes per side. So what I'm gonna do now, Put some panko breadcrumbs on a plate. I've got my deboned fish over here. And I'm just going to basically put it in here, side to side, and then throw it on the oil once the oil's hot enough. Okay guys, so we're gonna drop the fish. It should literally take one to two minutes per side. I debone them. The rice, it's pretty much done. It's been about a half hour. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to open it Right, you'll see all the steam come out. I'm gonna shut the burner off and I'm just gonna let it sit. I've already mixed it up. So I mixed it up and now I'm gonna let it sit and that's how you're gonna get that perfect rice. Now for the fish, we're gonna take out our little fillets, lay them on a napkin to get the excess water out and we're gonna put them in the panko. Panko is what dreams are made of, guys. The simplest, most amazing thing on the planet. We got our other filet, lay her down. Let's throw her on the panko. Let's get some napkins. Then we've got two other small pieces of cupera right here. we're gonna throw in here. So I'm gonna push around, make sure I get a lot of panko on there. I'm a fan, that's personal preference, how much you want panko crushed your fish. I like a healthy dose. If you guys notice, I didn't even season the fish, no nothing. I'm gonna let all my 
flavor come from the sauce. I'm a big sauce guy. I think if you got a good sauce, there's no sense in over seasoning something. All right guys, it's time for the money moment, baby. It's time to drop these down. Drop a little piece first and then lie the rest of it down in case you've never fried before. Should be about two minutes, not even. All right guys, I just lightly salted the rice. Some people like to put the salt in the water and then let it evaporate, kind of creating like a salt water. I like to salt it after. I think you get a little bit more flavor out of it. It's freaking perfect. All right, boys and girls, there it is. Lightly panko fried Kubera snapper with garlic, cilantro, lime, olive oil sauce, and, or not lime, lemon, pardon me. And man, I can't, I'm so hungry, guys. I haven't ate in like 12 hours, so I need to eat. But yeah, it looks freaking amazing. Can't wait to eat it. I know it's gonna be amazing. If you guys like this type of video, please, please, please drop a comment below and let me know if you wanna see more of these. I'm sorry if some of it was cringy. I'm sorry if some of it wasn't good. This is the first time that my wife and I have ever done a catch and cook, well, filmed it at least. So it de definitely a lot more goes into it than just going out there and catching big snooks. So props to all the guys that do catch and cook so regularly, like Landshark and his um, fiance, Bricky Christ. Like, oh my God, wow, a lot goes into it. Thank you so much, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe because it helps me to grow this channel, and as usual, I will see you guys on the next video.